Bear markets for those only concerned about price are brutal. The sustained downtrend coupled with the onslaught of biased clickbait FUD driving media headlines further compounds this, resulting in a great distraction from what you should really be focusing on when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. For me, the signals are clear. Cardano will soon boast the best trading platform unlike anything DeFi or traditional finance has seen before. The biggest NFT platform, revolutionizing the ebook industry. A highly scalable mobile network bringing connectivity to the developing world. The most sophisticated, widely adopted DID solution in existence. And a killer dApp that in effect will serve as a portal into Web3, tying everything in the ecosystem together seamlessly. Cardano's vision penetrates so deep into the future that it's not market sentiment you should be focused on, but instead the activity surrounding what's being built here, as it's this that will determine which chain realizes network effect and the mass adoption of blockchain technology. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. First up today, and ever since Mr. Telecoms tweeted this video back in late August, confirming that the Morin station had been installed in Zanzibar, with the first Aerostat launch tantalizingly close to getting that green light to fly, the Cardano community has been full of anticipation for this monumentous event to take place. The launch of the first Aerostat is going to make history and is a huge step towards realizing their mission to connect the unconnected, proving their innovative model and technology to the world in real time. Now, we've been covering the progress very closely on Cardano Insights. As you know, I take a great interest in what World Mobile are doing, and we've gone into some pretty deep detail on how they'll play a pivotal role in Cardano's mission to bank the unbanked. Mickey had recently confirmed that they're waiting on final papers to come back from authorities, at which point the first Aerostat will take flight. Since then, we've seen Mickey and World Mobile on tour presenting their project and mission to the world at some of the biggest industry events. But the question on everyone's mind is, where are we at currently in terms of developments surrounding the Aerostat launch? Well today, Mickey gave us this update confirming, Dear World Mobilers, in the last week several senior and co-founder representatives met for a series of sessions with the Tanzanian authorities, including the TCRA, that's the Tanzanian Communications Regulatory Authority. The meetings were to finalise any additional questions or queries the authorities required to approve our flight in Zanzibar. Our maiden flight will be the first launch of a communication-based Aerostat in the African continent, and all of the World Mobile team's efforts to pioneer, educate and support the relevant authorities will set a precedent for future launches across Africa and beyond. We expect a final round of discussions before being granted the final approval to fly, and we're progressing at a good speed. I'll keep you informed as soon as we have news. World Mobile followed up with this. We know how important this moment is to our community and we're excited to share this news. From the team on the ground in Zanzibar, we're listening to you and we're committed to continued dialogue and the sharing of updates with our community. With that in mind, who's up for spaces next week? We've got news to share with you. We know you're going to like it. Now, I think we can all agree this is extremely exciting news and we'll be sure to keep track of all the developments. I'll certainly be tuning into next week's Twitter spaces to bring you hot off the press updates as this all unfolds. We're on the verge of experiencing an event that will be looked back upon as a defining moment not only for World Mobile's legacy, but for the Cardano blockchain itself, as connecting the unconnected and banking the unbanked starts to become a reality. Now to a potentially underrated piece of Cardano news that signifies a pretty big step forwards in Cardano's DeFi journey. MinSwap announced that Cardano tokens that are being traded on its DEX are now being tracked at CoinGecko, the world's largest independent cryptocurrency data aggregator and best API available. Why is this significant? Well, for the continued growth and exposure of Cardano native tokens and DeFi projects in our ecosystem, it's vital that they're well represented across the wider crypto space. This is another step in that direction and comes after they were also listed or being tracked by CoinMarketCap earlier this year in July. Nice work from the guys at MinSwap and let's hope there's more to come in this respect as Cardano's presence continues to grow industry-wide. Next up, and NFT volumes on Cardano are going pretty crazy right now, with huge sales and floor prices of some of the most popular projects reaching new all-time highs. In terms of volume, despite what the naysayers want to believe, this ghost chain is doing some serious NFT activity, in the last three days consecutively, reaching 3 million ADA in volume, maintaining Cardano's presence amongst the top three blockchains for NFTs. Despite experiencing one of the highest volumes in the blockchain's history, it's functioning perfectly, faster than ever, and proving its ability to handle sustained trading volumes and user traffic, which is expected, but still very impressive. 
Now to some impressive floor prices, notably the Ape Society floor has risen to 9000 Ador on JPEG store, and yesterday saw the massive sale of Ape Ford Edwards for 180,000 Ada, which was initially purchased by this seller for 7,500 Ada back in January. You may have also heard of the Berry NFTs, the first ever collection minted that effectively bought NFTs to Cardano and gave birth to the vibrant ecosystem that we know of today. These NFTs, just 100 in the collection, were gifted to early supporters of the Berry Pool, courtesy of Alessandro, and now hold historical significance, in turn increasing their value. As a result of two recent sales, both for 65k ADA each, for Berry Yellow and Berry Blue, the floor price at JPEG's store is now 95,000 ADA. In the last 24 hours alone, 2.5 million ADA was spent on NFTs at JPEG's store, with over 100,000 ADA paid out to creators in royalties. Now, whilst the NFT space isn't for everyone, I'd urge you to at least go check out the marketplace, browse some collections, and just take a look at the level of activity in terms of sales. Cardano owes a lot to the NFT community of creators, marketplaces, and buyers in terms of the volume being traded on chain, user activity it's created, brilliant sub-communities it's formed, and importantly, growth in user adoption, attracting many to the Cardano ecosystem for the first time. Now, you'll know if you've been a regular viewer of Cardano Insights, we always like to track developments that relate to the build out of developer tools and infrastructure that's going to improve the developer experience and in turn open the door for many new entrants to join and contribute to the growth of the Cardano ecosystem. Yesterday, TX Pipe Tools, who build open source tools and infrastructure for Cardano blockchain developers, gave us this thread announcing the introduction of Dimitar, which is a cloud environment that provides all the tools needed for building out decentralized applications. They provided a great overview of what Demeter is bringing to the table. Here they write, Hello world, ready to code in Cardano. Here they outline Demeter has all the Cardano infrastructure that you need in one place, access to Cardano Node, DBSync, Oatmeus, and more to come. No setup required, create a project and get access to any of the tools. Demeter is also a development workspace ready to start coding. Don't waste precious hours setting up Cabal, Nix, GHC, etc. Get a ready to use environment to start coding in Haskell, Plutus or any other available stacks. They continue, deploy your dApp without worrying about infrastructure, build your dApp as a docker image and deploy it to a production environment with everything you need to run your Cardano project. Move to self-hosted at any time, we strive for a decentralized environment, at any moment you can trigger the eject option and you get all the Terraform and Kubernetes scripts you need to switch to self-hosted infrastructure. No vendor lock-in, everything open source. In essence, Demeter removes many of the barriers to entry when it comes to the setup of project infrastructure that in most cases is extremely time consuming, enabling the developer to focus on what's more important, building code and creating their decentralized applications. From what I've seen, it's already been a major hit and greatly received amongst the developer community, with many already sharing their experiences in using it for the first time. The contributions of TX Pipe and introduction of Demeter is significant, not only for the current developer community, but also in terms of onboarding and attracting new developers into the Cardano ecosystem. Next, and we check in on Flint Wallet, who yesterday gave us not just one, but two sneak peeks into some cool UI developments coming very soon to the wallet. In the first, they demonstrate the use of ADA handles when sending transactions. As you can see in this short demo, type the ADA handle in the receive address, and you'll note the ADA handle logo auto-populates, providing a nice upgrade to the user interface and experience when using ADA handles to move your ADA. In the second sneak peek, they also confirmed that soon Flint users will have the ability to enter the specific URL into the Flint Wallet DAP browser to visit any mobile enabled Cardano DAP. This marks two of the many community requested updates Flint have been hard at work to deliver, and as I understand it, they are also working on multi asset sending, which is coming very soon. Finally today, and we go to a project that we've not featured before on Cardano Insights, but many of the Sapien subscribers have requested coverage on. An ETBTC caught my attention some time ago when native tokens and projects building were first appearing on the Cardano blockchain. For those who haven't looked into the project before, they aspire to be a fully on-chain, decentralized, open source and secure ecosystem built to bring the largest cryptocurrency asset, Bitcoin, to the Ergo and Cardano community. The protocol itself will enable Bitcoin holders to unlock the value of their assets in a secure and efficient environment to provide yield without selling any Bitcoin and without any third party custodian involvement. As is the case with Wrapped Bitcoin for example on the Ethereum blockchain which is the largest Wrapped Bitcoin protocol to date with over 15 billion dollars of locked Bitcoin value. So with this in mind it's fair to say they are building crucial infrastructure to progress blockchain technology, decentralization and cross chain user activity whilst avoiding interference from any third party intermediaries. 
As you can imagine, wrapped Bitcoin has the potential to provide the Cardano blockchain with essential liquidity for DeFi applications to thrive, as it will enable the transfer of the full value of Bitcoin on a one-to-one -one basis to the Cardano ecosystem, and in turn, will potentially attract many holders to deploy it and start interacting with our dApps. Anita BTC will be entirely on-chain using Ergo smart contracts and will be fully compatible with cross-chain decentralized exchanges on both Cardano and Ergo. As many of you may already know, the token associated with the project is known as Neta or CNETA on Cardano and Neta on Ergo. There is a combined total of 2 billion protocol tokens and it's hard capped at this amount, 1 billion on Cardano and 1 billion on Ergo. For full tokenomics, check the article linked in the description below. In terms of Cardano development, since March, the team at Eneta BTC launched their LIZO, where 90% of the earned rewards went directly to the Neta Liquidity Fund, a 100% community-owned fund for holders of CNETA and Neta tokens. They also implemented Triple Yield Farm with MinSwap, offering CNETA, ADA and MIN for providing liquidity to the CNETA, ADA pair, and launched Eneta Angels NFTs on Cardano, providing boosted rewards to holders for staking with the Neta 1 and Neta 2 stake pools. But where are we at in terms of developments moving forwards? In a recent Medium article, they outlined their roadmap 3.0 and laid out the pathway to realizing Bitcoin on the Cardano and Ergo blockchains. Yesterday, they announced that the CNETA staking is now live. Holders can stake their tokens at anitabtc.io using NAMI or Eternal Wallets. Earlier this month, they completed the first ever cross-chain protocol governance vote between Cardano and Ergo using Voltaire and Ergo Games, respectively. This month, they'll be launching the Bitcoin wrapping testnet on Ergo with a view to go live to mainnet this quarter. Following the launch of the Ergo testnet, Cardano development is scheduled to begin, and ItaBTC state that their experience with building wrapping architecture on Ergo has allowed them to refine their processes and infrastructure. They have a team of Cardano developers ready and waiting to begin development pending the launch on the Ergo testnet. The successful launch of their wrapping protocol on Ergo testnet should help contribute to a smooth development timeline for their wrapping protocol on Cardano. The testnet on Cardano is planned for Q1 to Q2 2023, with the mainnet expected early Q3. In Q3 they also have planned other asset wrapping like Ethereum and Algo, an asset-backed stablecoin and the Anita wallet. Anita BTC is an interesting project and it's great to see cross-chain deployment and governance voting between the Cardano and Ergo communities. I like the fact that they're working towards a fully decentralized protocol whereby the community controls the direction of the project. The utility and attractiveness of a fully decentralized Bitcoin wrapping protocol is clear and has great potential to contribute significantly to the growth in user activity in our ecosystem. A big six months ahead for the project and we'll be sure to track future developments as they materialize on Cardano Insights. So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and want to help Sapien connect the unconnected and harness the power of the YouTube algorithm, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, which is the best way you can help support the channel. We'll be back soon with your daily roundup. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.